Hello and welcome to another episode of Atlanta Brick Co. TV. I'm your host, Mark. Today I'm joined by my brother, Steven. How's it going? Now, Steven, you were here a couple weeks ago showing off your awesome castle build. Mm -hmm. Is that right? The Black Falcon's Fortress. Yes. I remember it. Appreciate you bringing it out to share it with us. This week we have something similar, but at the same time, vastly different. Completely different. <laughs> exactly. So, Stephen, yeah. what is this build on the table here? What, describe this to someone who does not know anything about what this is. There's a genre in the Lego world called, mm. um, it's sort of like dystopian, sort of utopian, apocalypse, sort of uh, rundown cities, that sort of thing. Future. Future yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's very popular. And Lego has sort of tapped into it with Ninjago City. Yes. So you got like the water and everything. It, it, it's a really cool genre. And this is my interpretation, representation, uh, representative of, of that. Your so execution of that genre. Precisely. Right? I, I saw a couple of examples of that cool cyber city theme going on, and mm -hmm. I had to make my own. So can you name a few specific mm -hmm. examples? Like, I know you said there were some really um, true inspirations for you for this build. Definitely. One of the key ones was actually here on this show, where we did our favorite, um, oh, the best Lego sets according to... Jacob, Joe, and Steven, sort of yeah, like that. Yeah, we, had our, we brought in Wally, brought in the, the Imperial flagship, and Joe brought in his Ninjago City. I think it was Ninjago City Gardens? Yes. And it was absolutely just breathtaking, and it's also breathtaking in its price as well, like $800? Well, no, the, the retail price was, I think, in the 300s, but it's still yeah. very expensive. Yeah, set. yeah, yeah, it was a lot. Uh, uh, now that they're you know, retiring some of those sets, like the Ninjago City set is $1,000. That's like $1,000. Yeah, it's so really, they're, really expensive. they're very expensive now, like a little out of my typical price point for sets that I just normally spend. But I was like, yeah, I gotta make my own, you know, it's so cool, I wanna make my own, it just really spoke to me. And I was browsing around here at the store and I found the City of Lantern. And that was a lot smaller, but it was like 150 bucks. Is it was for 2,000 pieces? Exactly. And it it's was, not Ninjago, it's Monkey Kid. No, it's right? Monkey so Kid. It's similar, but also very different. Mm -hmm. um, but similar style, kind of like the city theme, you know, very, very similar. And yeah. lots of great stickers and other characters and stuff. Details. Yeah, lots of details. And I saw it, I'm like, this has got a lot of potential. So I bought it and I kept building and I kept working on it. And a couple months go by. And I came up with this, and I, I set out to make my own Ninjago City, and I think I, uh, I think I did it. One other piece of inspiration was Stefan's show-stopping build, New Hishima, New Hishima, Hishima, right. New Hishima, <laughs> which I call I just call it the Cyber City. It's absolutely just breathtaking. It's going to be in Brickworld coming up here in Chicago. It's just absolutely insane. We'll look forward to so that yeah. in June, yes. Yeah, You'll it, probably see pictures all over the internet. So yeah. It's a little more bleak, a little more um, rough and tumble. It's uh, like cyberpunk. It's a little uh, bit uh, yeah, like the more mohawks gritty, and yeah, gritty yeah. and tough, you know. But this is more, uh, a little more pleasant, you know. Like, idyllic. Like, yeah, a little more. There's flowers and flowering trees and fun characters and ice cream stands. Yeah, this is a lot nicer than uh, that one, but it is also yeah. a little bit run down a little bit, so I wanted to get a bunch of cool genres all mixed up into one. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. a, a conglomeration of many cool things, right? Yeah, uh, some Exo Force, hence the name, mm -hmm. and some Ninjago as well, like thrown in there, some characters, and even some Nexo Knights and a few other fun stuff. But uh, yeah, a little bit of Monkey Kid, a little bit of everything. Yeah, I even see some Star Wars and some other Lego Back themes. Back to the Future, Nexo Sesame Knights. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got Lego Island, I got DC, I've got so many. I, I've also been collecting a bunch of like goofy stuff Weird over the years, stuff. over the stores. Like, Ooh, hey, how much is this guy? Oh, he's only five bucks? Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, that's sort of thing. Little well, random details. I got a Minecraft parrot. I got Ned B from the Mandalor uh, from um, uh, Obi-Wan. I've got the Clockwork Robot. I got Iron Man. I got the LGM. I've got a bunch of other random characters as well. I've got these these um, prototype translucent minifigures. They are Lego. Uh, they're not very expensive, but they're really cool. I got those from a great friend of mine, Cody. Shout out to Cody. Mm -hmm. They're over there working on the computer. The blue one's working on the blue computer. Mm -hmm. It's pretty funny. Um, Buzz Lightyear, uh, there's a Lego store in here. There's just as many details and fun, goofy things as I could fit. I even got Spider-Man at the top. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it makes total sense. It, it, cherry on top, <laughs> Spider-Man looking over the whole city. Yeah. Now, so you said you used the City of Lanterns and it was just kind of yep. a, a several months of building. Uh, would you say that the core of that set is still kind of the foundation of this build? But then yeah. you've really just added all your extra elements and layers on top of I it. I think like 35 to 40% of it is still the City of Lanterns. Like I that had track, to have right? this, this little... This little um, little uh, monorail thing they had mm -hmm. going on here. It's not a, um, an old fashioned, it's like a train. A tram. This, yeah, yeah the, the roller coaster tram. It's just so satisfying to spin this around. I had to have it in the set. It looks mm -hmm. great. The Lego store here at the middle, that's original. Yeah. A few other buildings are also original, but a lot of it, I like the restaurant down here, but a, a lot of it I just completely overhauled brand new stuff. Added new sections, made the floor stronger, and 
really went to town. Yes, that's yeah. awesome. And uh, so looking at this thing, you've already named off most of them, but what, was some of, <laughs> what are some of your favorite um, figures and details in this scene that you really want to just, you know, call out particularly? There's a lot of video figures that are actually really cool. I love this robot with the satin head. Yes, the, the satin blue the head. The alien DJ. There's a green one in here too, the alien DJ. He's one of my favorite minifigures. I've got um, an ice cream man, also from video. He's serving ice cream, which don't. Don't, don't, don't think about the science. I got two that. of them. Don't think about the science. An <laughs> ice cream man serving ice cream is kind of weird, but it's also a little morbid, really fun. maybe. It's yeah. very fun. Uh, some people might, some good Star Wars fans might spot a white Boba Fett that is, in fact, a counterfeit. They were going to throw away the headpiece. It's just a headpiece. The helmet. The helmet was a fake, mm -hmm. and they were going to throw it away. And I'm like, can I have it? It's kind of nice. They're like, yeah, take it, whatever. Um, which we don't come across those often, so it's like, don't ask for. You it's know, a rare poly bag, yeah. yeah so. It's a very rare piece, but um, it was not Lego, so I'm like, I'll just keep it. It's kind of cool, so I threw it in there. That's funny. Mm -hmm. um, some more next to night, some Exo Force. I got some custom Exo Forces at the front. Yes. Around the back, we'll show you, we'll maybe do some B roll. I've got Batman running with a bomb, very funny. Mm -hmm. I've got, uh, oh, I've got the Gel Wrap, which is, a lot of people remember the Gel Wrap as being our most abnormal, like ridiculous, freak, unusual, like a freak uh, Lego build we did at Lego Masters, so I was able to make my own, which is extremely fun. I'll we'll do a picture of him later. <laughs> Along with like maybe a hundred other amazing figures. And I've got the um, the new neon yellow character here. He's like a Unitron character. Yeah. The, he glows like the crazy. Stunt driver there, yeah. So. Stunt driver. So I got City. I've got uh, the new, some of the cool Iron Man characters and Star Wars droids and That's everything. That's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. love all the the action packed details here, mm -hmm. Stephen. This this build you you made it and it looks great, especially in, under nice lighting. Mm -hmm. However, you went the extra mile. Mm -hmm. I had big to. time. <laughs> you 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 wanted to add a, a wow factor, and I think you absolutely succeeded. So, would you like to show this build's main mm -hmm. party Let, trick let's show, here? Let's show what happened. Let's show where the magic's at. Even under the studio lights. I have here a large battery in my hands, and I will then plug in this one single USB, and there it is. Wow. Now the lights draw it out a little bit, but this whole thing lights up, and it lights up a lot. I forgot how many cords I have running through here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cords with each with an average of around four lights on each one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so everything. Eight times four, yeah, yep. lots of lights. Exactly. So I wanted to make sure everything kind of had a sort of purpose. I've got these spotlights here and there lighting up the top, and I've got uh, a lot of the buildings are lit up, not all of them, most of them. The train stations have bright blue lights in with these light blue elements. It just really highlights some of these cool neon effect uh, elements. Yeah, the neon orange and neon green are really starting to show up, like those little figures yeah. down there, the pieces. The green light is in the restaurant. I've got the strobe, which is very eye-catching down here for the um, social media booth or something. It's like, <laughs> it looks like a photo dog. booth of some kind. Like, it's kind of like an old, a newer fashion photo booth of some sort. It's very mm -hmm. funny. But yeah, it's. I had to have the lights. The lights were inspired by Stefan's build. Most yeah. of the build was inspired by Joe's um, uh, uh, Ninjago City Gardens, but the lights, I had to do it. If you make a city like this, it must light up. It just has to. Well, so. it really adds the next level of awesome yeah. detail. It makes everything feel that much more alive. It's mm -hmm. really cool. And is it, would you say this is the, like the most substantial illuminated mock that you've done so far? On my, on my own, yeah. Outside of Lego Masters, Outside of, course, of Lego Masters, yeah. um, possibly. Although that world serpent really had a nice effect to it. That's so true. I think that still takes the cake. Well, I mean, but, like that was a yeah. collaboration. This is like a solo mock? Yeah, this is the most lighting I've ever done uh, on a model ever. And it really, it's mm -hmm. important. It pays off. It looks great. It really adds a lot to the, to the whole um, layout of it, for sure. Absolutely. Having built the mock, f is it correct that you built the mock first, then added the lighting? Yeah, which is probably the wrong way of doing it. Well, um, I mean, <laughs> Our, our own uh, uh, lighting instructions, they actually mm -hmm. suggest you have the mock already, uh, excuse me, the set already built, and then you add the lighting to it, and they show you how to do it. Yeah. So, having done it this way, do you think that worked, and would you do it differently in hindsight? Uh, it depends. I would have probably done it in large layers, and then okay. I would have had the light. The, getting up to the top here was a bit of a struggle because the battery is down here. Gotcha. So, I'm sure the power outlet is down here, and it leads all the way up to the top here. That was a bit of an annoyance. I could have done that a little smoother. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've had some canals going through that would have been easier for the light, uh, the wires. But generally, I think it turned out just the way I wanted it, which was nice. You're so. able to weave it together mm -hmm. even with an already built creation. I'd like to add also that every single light except the power outlet, which had more in a smaller space than what we usually sell here, mm -hmm. all of it was from the store. So all these lights you can buy 
right over there. So yeah. this is what you can do with some of this stuff. Um, lighting kits are fun, but if you don't want to worry about like the instructions of it, and you just like maybe a few lights here and there, mm -hmm. then I would recommend uh, our light setup. They actually they're very bright. The USB ones last a long time. I had none of them go out. None of the cords are broken. Mm -hmm. uh, although I was very careful, but yeah, yeah, I would recommend lighting. It's just. So cool. And it looked great at the show we took it to as well. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. when you were going about illuminating this mock, what were some of the top priorities as far as uh, color choices, the placement of the lights? Can you describe some of that information? Yeah. So at the bottom, I have the more unusual darker colors, like blue and mm -hmm. green. Like the lower end levels of the city are a little bit more like... Black like, light. Yeah, yeah, black light. Mm -hmm. A little bit more like punk, you know, ish, a little bit. When you go higher, they get a little more bright and like a little bit more better maintained a little bit almost because we've got the Lego store with its bright lights in here. We've got the lobster, the left lobster restaurant looks great. We've got the walkways are nicely illuminated bright, but it's a little darker, lower. So it, like, <laughs> yeah, it gives it a certain layer to it. So yeah. that's something I kept in mind. Ooh, darker colors down here. And have some of the more brighter, more uh, unusual characters Neon down colors, here. Right. And some of the more, like there's an old couple having tea right here and down here we've got like this this next to night villain and stuff like that. So it's like different layers of different, you know, it, it, there, there's more to it. It makes you study the model. So yeah. Gotcha, yeah. You mm -hmm. also mentioned like spotlighting different areas. Were you trying yep. to illuminate certain rooms and areas and buildings within the model too? Yeah, kind of trying to. That? A lot of the spots that had like a lot of traffic, I wanted lots of light. Yeah. Um, that was important because if you go to a city, obviously the places that are well, yeah, street well lights. occupied, they have lots of light and for mm -hmm. that. So yeah, I wanted to make sure that that was important too. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So one thing that I highlight yeah, please. Um, is the colors. Mm. Now without the lights, uh, now the colors on their own complement the color. Uh, the lights complement the colors well enough, but I really wanted the color to be right. So what I did was I went with orange as the predominant uh, color palette. It was orange with accents of accents of red, mm -hmm. and that that really works good because it stands out like caution cones basically. Like they yeah. really you see them far away, and I wanted to have uneven numbers, right? So you have one two, three predominant ones, and then two, one, two more, making five. So you have mm -hmm. uneven numbers going throughout, which is a little nicer on the eyes for some reason. Yeah. Uh, accented by dark teal. There's no green. Well, there's hardly any green. There's hardly any yellow. And there's not a lot of blue. There's blue light. But little, that works with sprinkle, the dark teal. but not much. A little dashing of it. Yeah. Not, just not a lot. Um, so that, um, with red and teal and, um, and orange, really worked as a contrast with a little accent of pink too with the 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 the, the, the train and the um, Japanese maple up the here. flowers yeah so yeah every color kind of complements itself but they're all kind of unusual colors to work mm -hmm. with so that really is uh, very eye appealing had a lot of compliments on the color when I actually went to the show uh, a lot of people really loved it and, and it turned out really good but yeah the color I'm really proud of like mm, it turned out exactly how I hoped yeah even without the lights this is a very vivid and eye-catching oh, creation yeah. but when you add the lights it just kind of enhances it even yep. more the so blue makes the dark teal look even more rich and stuff like that mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's fun and you said you brought this to the convention so we're talking about Atlanta Brick Con yep, that was uh, this was now of uh, almost two months ago mm -hmm. so a while ago but uh, yeah it, it, we did have a great time this was on display with the castle and yep. your tree guys yep so. All, all in one group. It was pretty well, sort of. <laughs> there were separate models. Yeah, I, had a, I had a small table mm -hmm. uh, to myself. That was nice. And yeah, this was part of that display, and it definitely turned out like, yeah, the, it, it had a great showing. Didn't win any awards, didn't really want to. I may have gotten like a best lighting nominee, maybe the, that's potential. We, but we do have a really big yellow trophy over yeah, there, so we're pretty I'm good. Totally I mean, good trophies. Know. I don't need them. I just want to inspire people at this point. Because yeah. I was inspired. I'm like, look what I did. This oh, was for fun, do. right? That was exactly, the main purpose yeah. for this. This was all intended for fun. So. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, we really appreciate you sharing the castle, and we loved seeing this. Maybe we'll have to check out your tree guys here in a future video sometime. Yes, yeah. we definitely should. I could go into de in depth on those guys for sure. Absolutely. I mean, those are mm -hmm. as big as this, and also have lights and stuff too. So very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you so much for bringing this out, Stephen. This is yeah. a really cool model. We'll make sure to show as much B-roll and extra footage as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to see more pictures of this, you'll be able to see them on your Instagram soon, right? Yeah, and I got to get some uploaded pictures. I have a nice reel, but I want to make sure the pictures get up soon. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure Stephen. Instagram is right up here for you guys to see, and you can go ahead and follow him there. So, mm -hmm. yep. Well, thanks so much, Stephen. Thanks, guys, for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoy this kind of content, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We have more videos coming up soon, even more of Stephen's mocks. So, mm -hmm. we'll see you guys then. Bye bye.